big issue now is uh, Andrew, you know, and the whole farce of whatever you want to call it. I mean, you know, like um, I think about two months ago, um, I was there for nearly a month. Um, I had uh, some sort of infection of my upper jaw thing and we went to like a um, dentist, I had surgery and it was kind of really bad. I was all swollen. So I stayed in his uh, uh, so-called trafficking mansion for the nearly a month. No one there, security, the people that work uh, around the building, cleaners. Um, but anyway, they got all the cameras and shit and it's just, um, I call it hot air, eh? Yeah. Did not, did no <laughs> and that's it. Really. I'm, I'm a bit worried for him, obviously, as a coach and as a brother and then as a, well, so-called father figure, <clears throat> because you can't talk to him. He has obviously no, no phone or nothing. And you see all these clips and as someone who generally cares for all my students, obviously, you can relate to that. You know, it's like a big family and he's not just uh, my student, but everyone knows him and you don't have to like or agree with everything someone says. I'm sure we'll probably disagree on many things, but who cares, you know? Yeah. You have your own opinion, and so what? That's it, really. Otherwise, all good, yeah? Training tonight, 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm going to kill them as usual. Storm Gym. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Storm Gym UK now. Um, I'm no longer... It's a long story anyway, still legally going on, so yeah. I understand. I'd rather not. Uh, I'm, Storm. I'm Storm is my fight name and no one can take that away from me. 100%. Uh, that's it. Well, let's, let's start. That's it. Let's start from the beginning then, because uh, I've heard I heard that you were in a war. And uh, I did want to speak to yeah. you about that, because that is incredibly interesting. Um, could you tell me a little bit about that? Um, first of all, uh, we have an old saying back home. Whoever wishes war should have it in his house. <laughs> um, it's not a good um, um, experience at all. And it's, um, I was a capable man and I served the military, both Yugoslav army as well as obviously Bosnian army. And I was in the war and in the Yugoslav conflict, as they call it. <clears throat> um, too many innocent people died, and mainly on one side, on the Bosnian Muslim side. Um, and I always say, you know, if you are such bad Muslims or whatever, you know, because I, I tell many people I'm Muslim, they'll go, you're Muslim, because obviously I'm not, uh, you know, your religion is here, and if you're a good man, I believe uh, in the old school values, you can, look all traditional martial arts or sports or whatever, don't cheat, don't lie, don't steal, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, blah, blah, you know, so it's the same here. And I grew up kind of like with that. And Bosnia is very multicultural. It's mixed. You've got, besides the three main sides, you've got actually even Hare Krishna, you've got Jews there, you've got Hungarians, uh, some old Germans, Bulgarian. It's like the whole world is there, you know? And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was really bad. Um, obviously, I lost my father as well in the war and loads of different family members. And I always say it's, that there are only a few of them because. Um, we mm, lost hundreds of thousands of men. And, and that's in the middle of Europe. No one, quite frankly, gave a shit. The first year, year and a half, they were killing us. And um, yeah, you know, I had my third brother was 16 then in two concentration camps. So, you know, my little brother was three and a half alone in the woods with my mom. We are, we are city people, so I mean, we grew up in Germany and I have no clue. I mean, even for me, being alone in the forest in the beginning, I did it as a duty. I can't explain you. I did it, so I didn't want anyone um, killing the innocent. So that's why I fought. No, like, um, one thing I have to make clear is, like, the Bosnian Muslims, they fought for the first, well, they fought for the Bosnian kingdom, the first, the first flag of Bosnia, not this one now. It's a white shield with, with uh, like, a blue sword, and um, with six fleur de lis. And the first king of Bosnia was a Catholic, but the Bosnian Catholic. Because obviously, as I said, we are, it's a rich history, and he, he's the true king. So we fight for that flag, while everyone fights for some other nationalist flag. And it's just crap. And to be honest, it's all political games, and everyone knew what was going on. 
you got tens of thousands uh, raped, tortured. You were um, everything. You, know, like, you were shot, weren't you, in that war? Yeah, I was shot several times. Um, uh, it's not the nice feeling, yeah. <laughs> so don't try this at home, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't get eaten or stabbed or burned or anything. Yeah, yeah, broke bones and uh, bloody hell, man. Um, sometimes uh, you know you wake up the next day, they have to cut your trousers. We have no clue, like you have a shrapnel in there, it infected everything. And you know, combat trousers they're quite loose, so it's like loads of space, and all of a sudden it's like you can't move. And um, so they cut it open, and it's some incision this big, and then next is like a little hole, and then obviously. We didn't have morphine and all that stuff, so the first time I got the bullet through my hip into my the, the end bit of the spine. So where it hit, basically, luckily, it just kind of damaged this. But it's like a dead end. Well, but from the impact, um, I didn't feel nothing down the three days, legs. So I was just like, excuse my French, no fucking way. It's fine. It's fine. Pinching myself, hitting, scratching. I remember some of the guys... Uh, um, you know, hospital was packed. You're talking, you know, hallways, double beds, which is crazy. Um, everything was full, and you know, they're just coming in, hundred something, sixty, forty, twelve, and they. You see, when they separate them to the rooms to die, and so we don't take no morphine. I mean, I had a bullet removed, um, um, seven point nine. This is the bigger one, not even the seven uh, six two. Um, yeah, and they said, look, we got guys. I said, fuck the morphine. Let's go. And I remember the nurse putting um, like a bit of cloth and like a stick in it in my mouth or like a metal thing, whatever. And she went like this over my uh, face, yeah, with her hand. It was the warmest, like my mother nearly. And that kind of, and then the guy said, look, with any luck, it'd be one incision. I said, don't worry, doctor. It'd be two. At least, and we did the incision on that. <clears throat> I even bent the aluminium uh, table I was on, you know, the one they wheel you in straight away, proper old school from probably Second World War. So I bent the whole thing. Uh, I can't, you can't explain those pains and stuff. So, you know, when you shin block wrong, I remember fighting a guy and I like low kicked and I swam. I think my leg went around. It didn't. <laughs> That's how I felt. I <laughs> so I kicked him again, yeah, same spot. I just kept him going like, you know, like oh. And then after the, it wasn't even nothing like it. Uh, so, I mean, so yeah, when you kick and you get hurt, there's nothing like it. And um, and he goes, yeah, you're right, it's two. He <laughs> 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 was you're laughing and kind of crying. Uh, it was quite difficult. It was about eight, around eight hours. They're trying to get um, things out, you know, and um, because he didn't want to go. Then he goes, look, we have to cut the glute open. I said, look, you touch the glute, I shoot you. <laughs> no way. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's like, try harder, whatever. Uh, the problem was that the spine was swelling with the bullet in. So my, 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 it went in the side of the hip into the back. And so my spine was going like, like this nearly. And it could snap because it took eight hours just to get to a hospital. Yeah, people have no clue. Like, you get shot some in a mountain. The first road is hours away. They drop you with people shooting at you. you still shooting from the... It's chaos, you know. Um, yeah, at the times too, I hear one bullet in my head was like the size of a elephant's head. That was the funniest because you touch like this, is all like water under. Yeah. And it's oh, yeah. There, there's loads of those stories. Um, you look back now, and um, you know, it happened. You you live with it. We don't have a too much of that post-war. I kind of believe some sort of war is always going on for men, one way or the other. And you know, you go to work, you go, you know, my father was killed, so when I was 21, I'm the head of the family. So if I didn't carry, when I used to fight in tail track, all the way around, sometimes 200 kilos, or 50 kilos of flour like this, and then a big military bag here, big there, you, you, you wire it up with cans and whatever else you can. Because I didn't smoke sometimes, and for the cigarette Russian, you can, you get like rice or, or or beans or whatever you can get. You know, you kind of exchange. Uh, a packet of uh, cigarettes was ten thousand, ten like like five ten thousand euros. So there was none. There was no food. The first time I 
I tried chocolate was three and a half years, so maybe some had it, but where I was, there was none. Then we used to be surrounded many times in, in like cut off, and so you have to fight yourself through. Then you fight yourself back in, then everything changes nonstop, and it's just like a big jungle. Even though I, I do like mountains and stuff, but when I go home, you know, as I drive back, and uh, I was there fighting, I was there fighting. Yeah. So every time it's like, a, it's not in a bad way because the thing is, the way I look at it, if I, if I and other like minded people didn't fight, then we wouldn't, there would be no Bosnians, proper Bosnians in it. In, 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 you know, and you have to understand, I grew up in Germany. I, I was young when I went there, like a baby, and um, I came back to former Yugoslavia when I was like 16. So from capitalism into sort of communism, um, but um, they were really independent. They're not NATO, Warsaw Pact. It was India, Egypt, and Bosnia, the only ones. That's why if you remember the, the Suez Canal problems, the Yugoslav Navy was there yeah. as an independent the <clears throat> history. Yeah. And um, it was very different. You know, you have to wear all the same. They basically, you wear whatever you want, but you get like a, a coat over, so they all, which is not a bad thing, you know, like if you're super rich and you wear uh, the latest Nikes and I can't barely afford, I don't know, let's say as the trainers, for example, it's hard, you know, and then, then I said some stupid stuff, then they got from my father, this is my first time I saw how systems work. And uh, yeah, the forces accounts, and they were following. He was going for investigation. I had to go to my auntie, very far away. My dad wanted to kill me. You shut up. It was so different. You couldn't say. You know, like here sometimes, um, they burn the I don't know, let's say the British flag, but the money, or swear the queen or the king or whatever. You know, it's your own heritage. You couldn't do that then in, in Yugoslavia. You know. That's if you do it on a bigger scale. Like, you disappear, but this is not um, like, yeah, we don't have that. People are a bit more proud as well. Like, you know, you can't just burn it or swear. I don't know. Well, that story of you saying something wrong and then ended up sort of um, in under a communist regime, yeah. being punished for it, that, that sort of translates to the Andrew story, doesn't it, really? Well, with Andrew, it's, uh, look, I was very young then, so I just said some of my opinion like i said why is if communism was so good why are people not poor but they have you know everything is pumped in the military and they don't have you got people that are just barely surviving it's not right you know then obviously i didn't understand so much about capitalism either but you have more beggars in capitalist countries than in any of any of the more or less communist countries you know you do have a house you do have a work and so on so it's a bit different anyway and then uh, they said, who prepared you for pro-capitalist propaganda and shit? I'm like, whoa, what was, I didn't even know what that means. You know, like, and then no one talks to you and stuff. And it was quite funny, actually. And then, yeah, my father was, they take him away and then follow him with this black car back, the, the so-called uh, secret service, um, which I understood then, like, you need to, it's okay. But with Tater, it's a bit different, uh, I think. He, he says, um, um, Obviously, the delivery is very strong because it has an impact, isn't it? Yeah. So, and you and me as a fighter, plus him being a fighter too, and a good one, is um, when you hit someone, you have to hit them properly. So, for me personally, that's why I think his delivery is so strong because he says it as it is. And, you know, they can't dispute that. What, is, what did he say? It's so wrong. What, what is it so wrong that he said? Okay, maybe one or two things or whatever. But, you know, when you cut... We know all the crap anyway, when you cut it out and do this, and then it's different. But, you know, a man and a boy, why do we go to military then? Why is the military service? So we need strong men to do and protect them, to do do stuff, yeah? And me as a military person, uh, I do think uh, even in this country, they should have military service. All these young pants down brothers walking around like they think they're gangsters or stabbing each other and stupid you know because there's no there's no structure yeah and uh, you know there is i mean i i sat uh, with the looting ball council uh, uh division of them for for like um, funding and stuff with the gyms yeah so 
the, the kids won over 20 world titles and okay Darren won one and so on pro and some amateurs and on opens and, and on shows and like then you have charities here that get funding because they got one or two or five kids off the streets five bloody 50 60 of them for years and and you're telling me because i'm a limited company i'm not entitled to that funding you want me to change my i call it my structure to become a charity or or, or community interest uh, whatever it's called and so on i'm like no i don't want to so why don't you give the people that will do the work actually some money um it's very difficult you know i, I don't get it i'm and i'm still against it why should i change you need to change and that's where i think that's where the big in a way divide this isn't it they, they just have no clue what's going on of course not <laughs> they don't even shop where you shop they don't go out where you go out they don't talk like you do i mean when i came to the uk um you know i, I obviously grew up in germany and then they also like Hochschule and gymnasium and so on they, they they teach you a few languages and i know many words uh, you know spelling especially like i remember working companies here and they asked me how to spell a word so i spell i found it always funny in our country man you'd be screwed for that not just from the teachers but uh, from the parents what do you mean you don't know your own language it's a big thing you have to know your language anyway and do you think um they, sorry go yeah i think they they're missing the whole point and the point always is that detachment you know you have someone come out let's say you're a normal guy you talk normally you come from nothing you can't tell me how it is down there. I mean, you see so many political programs, you know, where they talk and they have no clue. She's talking, repeating figures. One person, for example, I watched and they're just repeating figures and stuff. What the heck are you talking about? Go out, actually go on the street and just sit there and walk around. And I don't know, like we had the recently the king come to Luton, obviously, you know, the, 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 town center got cleaned up and it should be always like that not just for the king and obviously don't get me wrong you always have to you know make it pompous and fine for sure but like um there was no beggars there there was no nothing and even in this town because uh, it's just not it's too lenient you know Do you, you rape someone you get, you get next to nothing you rob a bank let's say you get very more but wait what about the human doesn't it doesn't a human life is, is our value so little and that's what it seems that's the problem and i think andrew just hit it hard really and it resonated with a lot of people so rather than one the platforming and just make him stronger to all this now crap whatever so you either charge him or you don't so you're using your power to detain someone where you put people down as victims i don't know if you saw it they say i'm not the victim um why did they put me down as a victim so their own people the, the romanian girls some of them and we were in a house we had the, everything was open we talked plus there's cameras you know they literally have cameras everywhere it's like what i think it's about 12 of them outside inside so i i mean god help them and obviously in it'd be a it's bullshit. you know you should be you should say what you need to say oh if you don't like it so what don't like it i don't like everything you say maybe so fine, you know, but respect someone's opinion. And these guys just, uh, mm, it's getting like this, you know? Yeah. Whatever you do, wherever you go, you can't do this, you can't do this, but wait a second, you know, like, um, I think for men, it's men. <laughs> so it's okay for us, you open this, so we can go for to war for you. You know, we can go build things for you, work at the very minimalistic and very limited everything. You know, it's just not right, you know. So, but I, I think they screwed up big time. Um, from a military aspect, I would have done it completely different mm -hmm. with Tate. Um, I mean, if I was on the other side and they just, uh, no, you can't, you I can't, no one can tell me shit about you and say, oh, yeah, he's a shit fighter. He doesn't know what he's doing. Can't he cook, 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 kick, look at him. I'm not blind. You know, you can show it because, and luckily now, you got very more exposure to everything because you can't lie anymore, you know? Yeah. I go back to, uh, is it Al Jazeera, the news channel in English? 
They're now globally, same like all the other, and they always show the other side too, and everything actually how it is, and it's not quite funny that in the beginning, oh, they support the, the, the terrorists, the this. No, man, they're, you bombed the school, what are you talking about? Or the hospital or so on. But, um, yeah, God help him. Yeah, go I'm actually I'm waiting to hear some good news, and uh, that's it. It's very uh, demotivating as well. So have someone that strong and, and such influential, and rather than really maybe sitting down with him and trying, look, your message is great. Can you maybe do it so and so? so. Even he said it a few times. Yeah, you know, like you don't realize sometimes, hey, eh, how 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 things can explode. It's a bit like business. You open so many businesses and they're all crap, and then one of them, boom, makes you a multi-millionaire. Who was it? The um, Alibaba guy. I listened to him, the, the Chinese dude. Yeah. yeah. Failed here, failed there, failed, 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 failed. And then, boom, didn't you know what to do? You know, all of a sudden, like, yeah. Um, just just to cut back for a second before we get a little bit more into the Tate situation. Um, do you mention that you think service should be done with the young, uh, particularly young boys in um, all these types of sort of westernized countries where it seems soft? Do you think the martial arts um, helps that need, sort of gives young boys particularly structure? Well, good you mentioned that. Yeah, good you mentioned that. Sports in general, they do that on such a big level. And martial arts, and I don't think there's anyone, nearly, out of all 60 million people in the UK, if you talk to them, probably 40 million did some sort of martial arts. And they learned all the values. The problem is the martial arts is like, I don't know if you saw the one championship, the phenomenal, in my opinion, the biggest thing for Muay Thai ever to happen among one million Grand Prix. So, and then all you hear is shit. Uh, weight divisions, don't they? Uh, shut up. When did you have the chance to get one million pounds? No, shut up, yeah. seriously. But then, of course, I'd fight anyone for a million quid. Put me in the exactly. fucking ring with anyone. But they will, what will happen then? They pay everyone, even if it's four so few thousand dollars, let's say, or even five figures, you know, they, they pay well. So they pay everyone. You don't have to do it, mate, but don't write. And so the problem with our sport in general, and I'm here now since 99, and um, I saw someone mention axe kickboxing a while back. Man, the amount of shit you get on there from everything to, and this is the biggest problem. How about just keep your stupid opinion to yourself? If you're not fighting, you don't have to do it. Who's going to do it? Uh, and uh, for me, the main thing, because I have a big issue with a lot of Muay Thai people uh, always shitting on every other style. Well, here we go. There's your chance to actually prove superior Muay Thai in the ring on the street is so superior, isn't it? It's complete. Prove it. Let's go. Because a little wrestler will smash up a big wrestler, if you know what I mean, and so on, or whatever, or judo guy, or, or jiu-jitsu guy, and so on, um, or whatever, common system. There we go. Let a little guy, um, I'm not sure, Liam Harrison, he cuts a lot, doesn't he? Yeah. So, of course, he's going to be 65 kilos. <laughs> you know, you see him banging out, the, the or whoever. Think, imagine they mentioned Liam, uh, they mentioned Liam Nolan, He's huge, height-wise. Now imagine him, he's walking, what, 85, 90 kg? I imagine, yeah. So they will all be big. So what if you put a 100-something, 10 kilo guy in there? Um, who was it? The Glory Tournament, I think, in the UK. The Road to Glory, yeah. eight man. It was uh, Amari Didrik who won it. 72 and a half kilo fighter, or 70 kilo fighter. And he was at 85 kg. He was the last minute replacement. So where's the problem, you know? So don't go... How it's so superior. I'm going to show it now. I think this is now the world will see true and proper Muay Thai. And also, um, it needs something new. You know, they introduced the MMA gloves. Everyone goes, oh, I don't like it. Okay, fine. But, you know, no one is fighting for free. They're all getting paid serious money. And look, I know when Andrew fought for 200 pounds, biggest fight in the UK, kickboxing, to being paid loads more. You know, so... You have to go through this. I just think uh, I don't like the negativity constantly with the Muay Thai lot. They, they just uh, fucking complain nonstop. What are you complaining about? It's always shit. And any decision, um, that's why uh, we de deviated so much. I mean, I have maybe about 10 fights, Muay Thai on Super Fight Series. And we have Super Thai Series where I plan to do 
like loads more pump money in and everything but you can't those 10 six or eight fights complained more than all the nearly 200 k1 fights we had on the show and i'm talking like from one coach the fighter the fighter's parents the fighter's friends the you know like oh to the one they, they grab the leg and they need them in the back and i'm like whoa and you know i love for me i i like i like fighting you know yeah. and don't get me wrong i'm not saying like taking anything away good tie fight man it's fucking it's great it's good skill good you see it everywhere you know but then sometimes like don't be so just be a bit quiet maybe not publicly so much that's why because we're not united on any front there's no well it's a different issue with governing bodies and stuff yeah yeah so you can't once you lose on let's say my governing body you just go to another one and shit on mine and then but you lost how about sometimes taking I call it, uh, I mean, I lose, we, we lose on our own shows, and I'm like, I think we won, but okay, then have a rematch, who cares, knock the guy out, I always tell my guys, you want to win, you need to knock him out, smash him up completely for five rounds, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that you won, and even if you don't win, then everyone knows who won, regardless, Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Of course it's true, yeah. And then you been there, you had, I watched you a few times, like you had bloody wars, you're always in a war, so... You go in there, and I, as your coach, let's say, I look at you, what you're doing, and of course, from my point, you're doing everything right, and you should have won, yeah? yeah. But I don't look, the, look at the fight, so I try to look at the fight. I like a good fight. I don't like, I don't really care who wins or loses. It's amateur level, all this C and B class, uh, which obviously it's more like a UK thing because globally it's only eight class uh, rules and you know it's a, but then if you have to take the laws and like we have a lot of dutch fighters come over because no headshots in holland now till the age of 18. and so let them just fight don't don't and i think us as coaches we need to i have my kid the same and he wins or loses you know and well done and i instantly tell him everything he did well and bad so some don't like it but that's how i work but you're fresh you know of course and i'm going to stick with stick to so um, it's a shame, but I, I, I think martial arts schools do so much um, and the coaches, none of us drive any big cars, you know, like I read the room, you know what I mean? Like none of us have nothing. It's not a commercial kind of, we put so much work in. You see a good kid, we probably get more excited than they do. Hold some pets, put them aside, do this, do that. Check if they're okay. I just went on my little one, see he slipped. The Rico fell kind of bit on the head and stuff, and you know, you it's more like a family thing. You know, we do so much more, but I don't think we actually appreciate it by the government as much, especially the sports institution. Um, so even like, if I can say it like this, for a small country like Bosnia, you can't just open a gym. There has to be three people. It's like a proper business constitution, the whole lot, and then the sports minister. They actually know about your gym because they know of any sports entity because it's registered properly and they have to acknowledge it and when you make results they invite you the pictures i don't even think i mean in luton I'm, I'm the most successful entity since 99. there's nothing else altogether and not trying to like sound arrogant it's a fact you know all together in one year what we make sometimes they don't make in the lifetime yet you hear you got 10 grand this guy got two grand this guy got five grand this guy was just the sponsor of 25 grand for what? Didn't produce one fighter, doesn't even teach for a year, for example, or two years or three. And it's very hard, you know. And, but again, any coach that has even one or two or three students, kids off the street, is fine with me. And, uh, you know, maybe you can only get someone to a certain level, then move on. It's fine, you know. And don't be bitter about it, if that makes sense. I, I, yeah, it makes I, sense. I don't suit everyone, I know that. I'm quite harsh in that respect, and I'm also good. My 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 utmost um, interest, good interest for my my student is in my heart. And you don't like my delivery again, probably the angle maybe gets a bit fun. You don't have to. It's fine. You go somewhere else where they're going to praise your kid and tell. I had kids come down the third down, whatever you know, and so on. And you just I understand the grading. Obviously, I I I've come from karate judo and so on. It's fine, but what's not fine is uh, that you think your child is when actually my little kid will come and kick him twice and he starts crying. 
So um, it's a bit disillusional. But then again, you can't blame the parents. You know, they sold that idea of, yeah, your son is good. And for us, it's a bit more real because we compete, we fight, and, you know, we have fighters' gyms. But coaches, I mean, especially in boxing because they get a bit more promoted, yeah? And you hear everyone's, oh, ex-gangster, drug dealer, mug, thief, you name it. They're all bad nearly, you know? You, I don't even know one. Kalzagi, maybe? Yeah. Joe Kalzagi. Yeah, isn't it? All the others, most of them had a, um, some some criminal um, history. And you can also see, it because obviously, um, I think uh, martial arts in general, when I say martial arts, uh, all of them, you have anything from, I mean, I have from TV directors, people that run their own like companies to normal people, even police, everything. They do all together. I mean, last night, actually, I was holding a little speech. I said, you name me anyone who gets this many nationalities together to train in a, in a nice, safe environment. This, should, this is what the country should be. Why can't my daughter or my son, let's say, walk to school because it's too dangerous? They're hanging around down there on the corner and you're too afraid that they're being stabbed. Hit them. Why do we have the military for? Round them all up, nice truck, somewhere in a nice container, not a container, I call it uh, one of those big, um, big boats they have, the big ships, the, the, the like cruisers yeah, style. Yeah. But the, but the, the, yeah, and then there we go. Or, or I, I, don't, I don't understand. It's like, it's too much, you know? And then again, everyone complains nonstop and police in a certain way is difficult. Where I had the, one of the girls, uh, she's a police officer, two and a half, three years work on a case and then we get two, two months. So you, you can't blame them either, you know, why should I work my ass up for what? You just release them? <laughs> for, yeah, literally, true. they just true. release them like this. No, I know. Well, saying that, Stupid, so. sort of going back to it, so you said um, sort of the values that you get and sort of uh, amalgamation of people that you get in, in a martial arts gym, the sort of values that you teach. Do you think, particularly because you're so outspoken and a strong character, do, do you think um, Tate learnt that? from you or what do you what do you think he took from um storm gym uk well originally Tate, <clears throat> originally Tate was very quiet um you know when he came it was only 15 16 he kept his head down and generally Tate was very if you like let's say like everything was compartmentalized and very very military because it's dead obviously if he came to train he came to train there's no catching up oh, yeah, did you watch this fight reading your shit he just came to train and in the old days, uh, it was very, very more brutal than now. I remember him always saying, break their nose like you broke mine of here. Break their ribs of here like you broke mine of You know, like, not taking it too easy, which is true. But, um, yeah, training was just brutal straight away. I didn't allow too much talking. And, yeah, you would get literally beaten up if you talk too much shit and actually don't come. Uh, so we actually trained, let's say, two hours or an hour and a half or three. Me and him sometimes would spar to two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, like proper, full on, like just hand wraps or bare knuckle because he challenges me or something <laughs> every now and then. Oh, I don't know, are you getting old now? I'm two times world champion. It was a great relationship. And um, yeah, he was very professional. He just came to train, really. He didn't talk much. You can ask everyone who's with him in the old days, there was much talking, you know, a bit blue, and that's it. Like, because we was always fighting as well, um, preparing for a fight. Um, yeah, and then he would have his time off as well. Mm -hmm. It was out drinking, partying, all that, like, like and that's it. But so overall, uh, it's, I always try to tell my love last night, actually, I mentioned, look, you all have problems. I said, look, in this room now, there's two people sitting that actually lost their family member just a week ago. I look at them, they're still here. I didn't point out. This, then there's about six people here who lost someone in the last six months. So leave your stuff outside, come in empty. You always feel better. You might even forget about that problem. The minute you go home, you know, we all say, when you come training, you do the training, you always feel better after, yeah? And it's also the energy. It's all like a big family. And yeah, he was very much like that. So he came to train and he listened. Because look, with Andrew, I started kind of teaching him privates nearly straight away. And so he invested in himself. 
Um, I charged obviously, but I gave him some extra because I could see in the lake, obviously, not anymore. Um, yeah, but he was a different machine, and um, you have to be very um, methodical with him as well. Let's say I make him miss the pets intentionally. I mean, <laughs> mm, shit, paid, or let's say that's thousand squats. And, mm, was it okay? So now I take shit, you could earn two thousand, you know. Everything was shit from my side. So, and then I get this essay, oh, Mr. Pets three times. Yeah, literally. So he was very self, um, non stop critical, you know. And because of that, I think he, he knew in his head as well what he wants to and how. And yeah, we were a little bit unlucky. I tell this to a lot of these guys now. Mm -hmm. Man, if we had all the chances, I mean, we were, the, he was in talks to fight in the oldest, Joe Schilling and, even Simon Marcus at full time rules and loads of different things, you know, we just wanted to fight and he did MMA and low kick and K1 and whatever it was out there. It wasn't like, oh, you just, oh, I just want to do K1. Well, not in my gym. So hence the old slogan, anyone, any style, any time. But yeah, he was very much too pro. He was my perfect soldier, if that makes sense. And very honorable. If he runs 10K, I know he runs. Look, after the PT, they, I, um, I said you got five minutes and about 15 seconds. So in my head, I approximately calculated how long it would take him to run. And they literally make it in five minutes and 14 seconds and give me the call back from the landline. So that's how, how they were. And I, I non-stop treated him like this. And I don't know, I went to the ultimate uh, cube master or just give names to, uh, or Bosnian press ups, obviously. I kick him and he does the press ups. Bosnian Jew box, four people kick you from each side. So when you do 100 presses and four guys kick your ribs and legs, you go, and you up and you go, yeah. You know what I mean? You go like, yeah. Up like that. The whole lot, you know, and we clicked very well. You know, it was never complaining. I gave him like, I remember uh, for one of the fights and I literally 30 kilo dumbbells, 1,000 squats, and next day, and even to this day, I mentioned it a lot. It always makes me like, oh, you know, like soft. I'm like, bless him. Look at him. He was walking like those first zombie movies, you know, barely holding on to the wall. I watch him on the camera and he comes in and like you can see, it took him literally about um, eight minutes to walk down 30 meters. Well, fuck, but he came to train. So now your little toe hurts, people are away for a week. I go, guys, they have a fight, they disappear for months. You don't even hear from them. Like he just won the K1 World Grand Prix or some shit. Or the one championship now. Uh, uh, Good building uh, Grand Prix, but it's like, and you can't have that. Not everyone has that, that that dedication and focus. And so he came in, and I remember, as I feel today, mm, fuck, yeah. do do shit, you know, you fucking read out of the thousand squats and you say so. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, only, only stupid enough, yeah, dumb enough. Anyway, and then uh, I said that's okay, go change, and then um, we started with the light jog, and he hates running. Yeah. Because he found out when I used to fight, I didn't run too much. I loved sparring, 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 you know. Because look, in the end of the day, nowadays, they break it down so much. You do one stupid exercise for one little muscle. But you never use that one muscle. Don't get me wrong. You can do something to, let's say, get a bit bigger back or a bit stronger. Stutter. But in the end, it's all in mental and physical. It's sparring. It's not trying to knock you out and you're trying to knock them out. So you have to spar. And you know, all that bullshit with light sparring and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You go in light, spar light, please, and then go fight full on. You know, it's okay for a bit technical injury stuff, but you have to go. I always say, go hard to the body. No knees and front kicks and, and, and spinning backwards in our gym to the face at all. Um, you know, you get a toe in your eye, you fuck. Man. I had one guy come back now after nearly two years. He had his retina. A little bit like clipped and took him two years to recover. That's him. And he's doing a fight, you know, just because some stupid idiot didn't cut his toenails. Yeah, I lined them up. I'm quite brutal there as well. Fucking self hygiene. Come on, man. You know, well, there's me talking. My sister broke my, uh, when I was back home now, my, my nail clip and I have to buy a new one. <laughs> um, yeah, but Tate was too, too pro, too, it was proper. And I think also because I'm, I, I was ex military special force and uh, officer and so on, and I was also intelligence officer. And I, I laid the law 
and but he I think he liked it also because his dad was military and intelligence and um every fight I would do with him mathematically. Does he train harder than you? No fucking way. Is he stronger than you? No fucking way. Is he fitter than you? No, no one fucking, no way. But you know, all of that like that. And uh, you have great facilities, great coach, we have experience with this, with that, with that, with that. And I go, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, and then he got like all a bit excited. I kill him on the pads as usual and he feels great. And you can see it, you know, look, my arms are, my palms are burning. Huh? Yeah. After pad work. And even though I put a, like a gel pad on, um, two pairs of hand wraps and the big yellow sponge. And, and he does it in 20 ounces gloves. He's still all of his knuckles are, are gone because every time he turns in. So when we do the 15, 20 rounds of pads, normally it was 15 rounds. Um, I just kill him, yeah, literally. And the 15 round was no limit. So the 15 round would be uh, 26 uh, minutes and 18 seconds. That's his record. Nice. So do the mathematics, yeah. And I punch and kick. Um, I'm not a big, uh, you know, for me, pad work. Um, one, you have to earn it. Two, you have to be good at it. Three, if you don't push, fuck off. I don't care. Princess, get on my side. And like, you now it pisses me off then, you know, like, what the heck, man? One minute in and you're dead, you know? Fuck off. No way. And there's no easy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, you low kick me, I cross you every fucking time. You low kick me, I kick your standing leg. Because what's your opponent going to do? Just take everything you give? Never. You know, they're going to punch you back. And for me personally, I like it. I do sometimes four or five kg, you know, sweat it out with balls. You know, full of, I like the body armor and the smaller pets so I can hit them. And he hated me when I hit him. <laughs> no, no, he wouldn't talk to me three days sometimes. And what I used to do, okay, I cheated. Oh, Bosnia fucking cheating. Say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, literally, I go like this, you know, he covers and I hit him with the side of the pet, but from the top of the head. <laughs> <laughs> or like both hands, or, um, yeah, it was. Um, it's great relationship, you know, obviously you can, I, I guess, sense the energy in the buzz. Uh, and so when I went back to train him a little bit, the first time, first day he did the 12 rounds, you know, not that sharp and obviously everything, but fucking strong, could do way more weights. So he didn't do really any weights, so chin up dips, uh, squats and a few dumbbells and that's it really. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then when I went the second day in the morning, because we're doing two times 12, 15 rounds, in the morning was like completely like, fuck, but you could not give up. You can tell on him. It was like 37 degrees in bloody Romania as well. I, uh, everyone who knows me knows I don't like the heat. So, yeah. I'm from the mountains. I like my cold and fuck the heat. I don't know how people live in those countries. I probably die. Yeah, I get that. But it's speaking about Rom speaking about um Romania, why don't we finish on um speaking about what's happened to Tate uh, properly a bit at the moment? Because what I've noticed is even a lot of people who used to support him have turned, and uh, as far as I can tell, and no, none of us know anything really about what's going on apart from the fact that, no. as you said before, a few of the women who have, who have apparently had allegedly come out, they've come out again and said that he didn't do anything. So why don't you speak a little bit more on what you know about that? Well, we do we do know the fact his uh, lawyer, uh, Sat, uh, also the story, he did a 45 minute interview with some lady, Romanian lady, and um, he didn't even know. He was presented the papers, 100 page papers for 45 minutes before the kind of court, and you, you, that's not, doesn't sound legit or properly. So they're using all those powers. And look, no one really knows why it happened. Even from from the old allegations and everything, uh, from April he went to, into Romania in and out so many times, and there was no need for the media and stuff. If they called him in, he would have gone in. You know what I mean? Like nothing to hide, nothing to fear. And it's obviously a huge machinery. You know, I mean, I'm blocking everyone and removing. You got sponsored the media agencies that are sponsored adverts. Uh, spreading lies about him. Well, even you don't know what's happened yet. You can't say that he's this and that. You know, like, because no one knows you know, exactly what you said. And um, I didn't hear anything back yet. Obviously, they're not afraid. And, you know, Tristan is doing, they're probably just doing thousands of presses a day, sit up squats and 
obviously Andrew since uh, recently converted is reading a bit more up on the religion and stuff and this is really they're just keeping it cool and you know this sometimes look I'm a military person you plan you prepare you train you drill drill to kill as they say and you get there and my friends <laughs> 10 deaths instantly, you t bombs, you just don't know. And it's the same a little bit here. And then, so what basically what I want to say is you adapt to it and you deal with it then and now. And I'm quite known for it. I'm not really, you can't dwell on shit, you know. This or this, let's go. So they're taking one day at a time. <clears throat> Obviously, they have the lawyers and they have a good team. Um, it's a big fish as well, I think, for, for the other side. You can't just come up with all this shit. And for me personally, for someone who employs so many people, people don't know how many people work for Andrew actually in Romania and globally in general, for employing so many people in their country, um, putting their country on the map as well for, for many things, you know, in a good way too. <clears throat> Very good way, shall I say. Um, you know, always spoke well about Romania, how safe, how this, how that, and um, paying and sponsoring and from orphanages and other stuff he doesn't really brag about and helping generally people and to, to for them to turn like that. Obviously, it's other pressures and stuff, and um, it must be. But then again, even that, no one knows. You can say, oh, it's this, it's that, it's conspiracy, whatever, matrix, non-matrix, uh, powers that be, uh, government. No one knows, really, because it, it doesn't say, um, obviously, it's the Romanian government that... Uh, is doing the department of theirs, the D, whatever it's called. Uh, for someone, as I said, I was nearly four weeks in there with my surgery. And besides the guy that comes once a week, do all the car cleaning, and the one another guy for the pool cleaning, and there's two security on there. <clears throat> and one of the guys that kind of like works there, but he's, he's in an outbuilding, he's not even inside the building. There was me, one of the managers comes in and out, and this is about it, really. So you get your delivery delivered, my food, eat. I couldn't even eat <laughs> properly. I was missing my meat so much. And then you think, well, wait a second, you know, like, plus it's a big allegation too. And all started with the swatting case, wasn't it? Yeah. Where that girl didn't have a boyfriend, American boyfriend, that she's actually there because <laughs> she was filmed. She went for the pizza. Didn't it? That's the one um, originally in, in whenever it was. That's how I understand it anyway. And then you can see it going in and out. So, yeah, sorry, guys, go. But, uh, you know, and look, sometimes systems, you can't blame. I'm a big believer in there has to be some law or it'll be anarchy, yeah? And if there's anarchy, we all know what will happen. And then it's, it's even worse in, in a certain way, yeah? Um, because everyone would just kill anyone they don't like, uh, you know, rape, uh, plundering, and and to a certain uh, to a certain um in a certain way as well, what is done in a legal way too. I mean, you see so many kids disappear. At the same time, you know, on the 30th, there's all this Epstein thing. What about that? You know, where are the names of all those? And, and look, most people know which actors went and stuff. It's stupid, you know? So there's no, no publicity for that yet. For some guy that comes from a, a state and made it, you're going to shit on him. The thing I find you awful know, about it. Sorry. The amount of donations he does for, for different orphanages and stuff, yeah, not just uh, human, but also um, like animal ones and, and, and then other people he donates there and, and pays and the employees, you know, like they don't think about their own people. You know, you when you lose like maybe lots of jobs, what then? What do those people do? You know? Everyone um, handsomely too, so I don't know what to say really. The thing, I'm quite disappointed with the whole lot. The thing I find... But sorry, he's sorry, the only one, isn't it? Sorry, he's not the only one. You can see that he's so much now. Loads of actors, loads of musicians, just people disappearing, going all quiet. Um, yeah, the guy hung himself, yet he was um, strangled to death. Yeah, yeah. And the cameras didn't work. In, in, in a official government, most secure institution. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really know, going back to it, yeah. The, th the thing I find awful about it, the one thing I would say is the opposite side to him politically, or people who think they're the opposite side, yeah. they almost seem to wish what he did 
happened, which would mean, I'm not saying he is Gilly, I, don't, I, I have no clue on it. I only know the people who know him, and they all seem to say he's a very nice guy, and you, you seem yeah. very genuine, and when I spoke to him, he seemed very nice. But they almost seem to want it to be true, which would mean then that the allegations are true, so then people would be hurt, which means they'd rather that than just be politically wrong, which really confuses me. I don't understand how somebody could hate him that much. It's not like that. It's blinding, isn't it? You got look. We all know what happened. All the sheep with with what we had now for a few years. Don't I don't even want to mention it or talk about it. A common, as even Andrew said many times, common call the flu or this or that. It's rubbish, you know. Like um, because they only fed one way, and then sometimes. Look, you're a multi practitioner. Yeah, let's say I'm a, I'm a boxing connoisseur, blah blah. And we won't see eye to eye, so you won't like me because of whatever, and I won't like you because of whatever. And then people, are, it's very small-minded, and it's going back to um, being a bit more open in general, and like not, it's a good old English saying, isn't it? They don't judge a book by its cover. Like, chill a bit, have a proper look at it, don't believe everything you see or hear. You can't now, because how can 200 institutions all say the same thing? Maybe a little bit changed, but they're all the same keywords, non-stop repeated. It's like brainwashing, obviously. Uh, it's stupid, you know. And I believe also in that um, thing. If you tell yourself you shit, you you will be shit. For me, I don't really care. I'm the strongest in the world. If anyone wants to fight me, I fight them, however you want. And that's how I always kind of thought about it. Even though maybe I'm not, that's okay. You just still you still prove me wrong. And always tell the guys, keep your hands up, protect yourself at all times. It's in life the same as in in the ring. I got knocked out, you know, shit, no clue what happened. Like, John, what's everyone doing in the ring? And you go like, shut up, you got knocked the heck out. I said, who, me? <laughs> and I'm the third day being on the toilet and thinking, shit, man. I feel so sorry for anyone I ever stopped. And however, whether it was low kick or just a front kick to the, to the, to the belly and I didn't make it, I mean, it's scary, bro. Like, um, you literally could have died. Never again. And um, and Romania as a whole country, you know, it's a shame. I was there many times. It's beautiful. And they still have to do what they have to do. Okay? And um, But I also think once everything is done and dusted, if I was him, I wouldn't stay there and spend my money there anymore. And even though... I don't think he will not do it like that because he's a bit there as well from heart. There's too many people that depend on him. Now imagine, you know, in that respect, fuck the system. You love your family the most, you know. You can't help it. And your friends, good friends and people, if you want to help someone, you're going to help someone. No one can tell you don't donate here or don't give money there. You know, so I, I, I don't know what he's going to do. Um, as long as he stays staying, there was the thing like, oh, he was rushed to hospital and shit and... It's all just sensationalism, and he shouldn't be rushed anyway. He's perfectly healthy. He he was supposed to actually fight, so I was supposed to go there, and the fight was supposed to be um, end of February. And um, well, I say it because that's all I can say. And the papers were not fully signed, obviously. It wasn't and Jake Paul. That's was it. It. Well, no, no. To be honest, um, they have a lot of. It's a funny. Again, you know, he's different. I don't mind him. I don't care, really. And if it is him, we prepare. If it is you, we prepare. If it is whoever it is, we prepare. And that's all you can say as a coach. You know, you, I do my work and we train. And the thing is, look, sometimes people are about complicated and everything. So when I low kick you, there's three things you can do. One, you block and counter me. Two, you take it and counter me. Three, you move. So I miss, yeah? And then you still do something of yours. Then people do it so sometimes um, it does my head in, like overthink it. It's very simple, mate. You're going to get punched and kicked. So what are you going to do about it? You'll be ready to take it, so conditioning, and not just the physical part, the mental part. Because when you get kicked 10 times and you don't block, it's going to be painful. <laughs> I had this little kid, I think it was eight, so, you know, I put the pad away. He kicked me up four times, a bit harder, harder. I'm like, little shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It was actually really painful, you know, like what I mean. Yeah, and they, they had like big boots kick me and like nothing in a way. And then like, this, it was just different pain, you know, obviously. And like, so 
you this is what you do then and then. So you can't just go, oh, I do this, I do the yeah, yeah, we practice this, maybe a little bit, but come on, you train like you train all the time and sometimes maybe a little bit in a tactical way. Let's say you go non stop full out like a pit bull, maybe let's be a, a Rottweiler, you know. He looks like sluggish and big, but when he gets up and starts attacking, it's a force to be reckoned with. So do it that way. And um, yeah, but um, don't know really. No one, no one knows. His uh, lawyer did the 45 minute interview. It's the most, he said, we have nothing. They didn't give me nothing. They showed me we have to, you can't read 100 pages properly and put, um, prepare defense or anything and plus it seems it's all old stuff so they took the same phone the same computer the same laptop and apparently even from from before they didn't return some of the goods or uh, all this you can't just confiscate someone's life they're trying to like literally like rip everything apart uh, like those machines in the matrix when they found that that ship yeah yeah well um, it's stupid people are no longer like really it's a good thing happening as well, and I, I like. Uh, I must I have uh, to mention um, Elon Musk on Twitter, and in general, Elon Musk is a very open person. You know, like you know, wait a second, let me. And even that guy from Fox News says, "No, I'm going to make my own opinion. Why do you have to tell me?" And just now, I got um, someone shared it on Instagram or Facebook, where they send the letters to schools, to children in schools, that if anyone talk state or this or, or whatever it's discrimination what are you talking about like you know what i mean like, what the heck what the heck is a school and children so that's how deep this old rabbit hole goes as, as as they say and i find it a little bit like too much i mean one of my instructors his his as he said my daughter still believes in fairies and you're teaching about for example going on to all the all the other stuff and sexual stuff in school so early they don't need to know that no they don't i mean, I, mean like I, I, I don't stuff. want my kids knowing shit about that i don't want anybody educating my kids about that apart from myself you know as fathers you never wanted to know right <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, particularly not somebody yeah. i don't fucking know though eh? that's true yeah okay. romania is um i don't know i don't know bro it's um I just feel sorry for them as well because it happened before Christmas. You know, they have children, they have families. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. They all live there. They all pay their everything. Some of them live actually in Romania. And so what, you know, like what now? Like you you are ruining your own people's lives. And but it's good to see as well as quite a few people out on the streets. There's people, there are people in front of the court and there's people in front of the prison all the time. And you can't uh, nowadays you can't do it anymore like before you know like yeah just arrest him or do something to him um it's a sad sad uh, story really the whole lot and sad reality to live in to to know well look after um, was it 9 11 in america they have the patriots act and in this country they have the terrorism act where they can just grab you with nothing no so screw the first amendment or whatever the human rights act they can grab you put you somewhere you can be there for years if necessary or as long as they want to or forever and with no trial with no nothing well that's not democracy no it's not you know it's not. that's not uh, right so it's a bit difficult to i don't agree with everything that goes on we obviously have now everyone striking the nurses and i, I bloody have to pay twice taxi now um because yeah, literally trains were gone, you know. But then again, how long do you expect people to work for peanuts? You pay, what is it, six, seven billion profits in three months and you can't raise a salary. Yet those same people made you those profits. Um, it's, it's too much. It's too much greed, you know. When is enough, really? And most people don't need that much more. You know, a few hundred quid maybe a month. You change so many people's lives. It's not so difficult, you know. When you make such profits, that's more than 60 million people, 250 quid would be like 200 billion. It's nothing. These guys make triple that much. That's just one company, for example, nearly triple as much in, in, in one in three months. Whereas there's, there's hundred companies that make 
prophets. Uh, I don't know. Feel sorry for old people. Make me have such a heating of, of old person. I would hang whoever that the, the, the minister for electricity is or something. And that guy needs to be sued and charged and everything. Not hang literally because we don't have the law. But when I mean hang, I don't mean literally. But like they need to, if anyone kill themselves because you switched the electricity off, nah, man, you need to go to jail. I you agree. just killed the person. I agree. There's no law. They say switch some. There's other pages, you know, like where this like GoFundMe or charity. Someone would pay for it, you know, even if they would publicly put it up. Plus, we are bailing them out all the time. So, what do you mean you switch an old person? An old person, anyone over like I don't know, anyone in pension age and above, they shouldn't be paying for this stuff and transport and everything. We neglect so much. Uh, well, there's no history anymore, isn't it? That's true. You talk back. Uh, your parents uh, don't care no more in a way. Because you you work so hard, and as I said, you know, I grew up. Uh, my father worked in the German mines for so many years. Got ill, he was disabled with 38 nearly. We had to move back to Yugoslavia, and that's why we actually moved back. And then, with my luck, uh, just a year before, year and a half before the war, two years sorry, and um, and then he got killed like stupid, and then to work all your life and build something and then everything got taken away it's crazy and i feel I, i'm actually and i always used to say i, I feel sorry for british uh, people as a whole i don't know next to anyone who doesn't travel an hour to work or longer Me the too. roads are crappy and crappy there's more cars more this more that and then you know after work what well, you need an hour and a half to come home again or two hours whatever let's say then you work eight. They expect you to work eight minimum, but everyone works a bit more. You don't get paid or compensated for it. So you spend more more out than in. And I don't I don't know how. And of course you can't blame them for drinking. You know, just something they have to do for themselves. Can't go on holidays. Has no money. Have no money. Can't go here. Can't go there. Can't go there. You know. So obviously there's loads more that are hard working and you know it's day in day in grinding. You have to do it, but it's it's sad that they are not compensated accordingly. Yeah, no, I agree. Really, one hundred percent, brother. It's a it's an awful situation, and I I completely agree with that. Okay, mate, it's been amazing talking to you, brother. Honestly, it has been incredible. Uh, just just to finish up, you have another. It's good. We always think I had the shows, but never really like. No, I you know. know. Converse is always. It's just hello, it's quick, yeah. little thing. No, I know it's very yeah. good to speak to you properly, bro. Well, last time you were getting ready, were you? You were, you were in your zone, so sometimes, you, you, you know, you with had, fighters, you don't want to go. You, you had Darren fighting, right? Darren, um, yeah. he's very good, by the way. He's, he's a strong guy. I've seen him knock out a few good people. Yeah, he's very strong. Um, yeah, and he, we are back on MTGP on the 15th of April. Nice. Uh, his first... Uh, tie fight under me so we're going to come with some new weapons because i said as i said i like combat i don't like the i just hope uh obviously it won't go the rounds no way um yeah we're looking forward to it and um yeah look fighters fight he's hungry he wants to fight uh, there's some people also ducking you know the usual shit not available not available well, then how is he come fighting for the title then yeah. if he's not available or why is he fighting so and so and then nah man that's why I like the old school eight months. So put them in eight month tournament. Let's see who the best is. Agree, brother. Well, every... but, you know, we're also good fighters and yeah, head down, work, let the results talk. You know, I think also going back to the Muay the community as well. Everyone is a bit more humble. They're not really used to the whole "I call you out" and the, the shit talk like in bare knuckle boxing or in boxing or the pushing and stuff. So it's a bit more respectful in that respect and again going back uh, you know kudos to all the coaches and everyone who's doing the hard work uh, we all understand uh, how this we all there we all in the same boat and everyone tries the best as long as you try your best isn't it uh, it's all that matters i think well i'll see you uh, probably i'll see you then as well i guess i'll see you brother i'll probably see you at mtgp yeah if, if, i'll probably be there okay top chat mate okay really good Anybody who doesn't know, check out Stone Gym UK, check out Darren Answer, and check out Amir because they're top coach, top gym, top fighters.